As an IT security professional, you'll often be looking for any evidence that someone may have breached or gained access to your systems. We refer to this evidence as an indicator of compromise, or IOC. This describes a situation where you are highly confident that there has been some type of compromise to your systems. For example, you may find that there is an unusually large amount of traffic being transferred over a particular network. Or perhaps the hash values associated with files that have been stored in your system have now changed, indicating that something has been modified with those files. Perhaps most of your traffic is within your own country, but you're noticing an uptick of traffic that's coming from international sites. Or maybe the DNS information in your servers have been modified, and that could be an indication that someone is trying to manipulate where traffic can go on your network. There might also be unusual patterns when people are authenticating or logging into the network, and there may be certain files that are suddenly being read a lot more often than they might normally be. All of these situations and many more could be interpreted as an indicator of compromise. And in this video, we'll step through some of these very important indicators to see what it might mean if we were to see it. One very telling indicator of compromise might be that your account has been locked out. This would be especially unusual if the account was locked because of too many attempts to log in, even though you were not the one that made those attempts. Most accounts will lock themselves automatically after a certain number of incorrect password attempts. And at that point, you would need to unlock the account to allow the legitimate login. Of course, the account could have been administratively disabled, which means it wasn't a password attempt that caused that account to be locked. Someone specifically went into your management system and disabled that particular user's account. That would certainly be an indicator of compromise, especially if no one at your organization was tasked with the process of disabling that account. And this indicator might be part of a much larger plan by the attacker. They might be trying to intentionally have this account locked so they can call the help desk pretending to be the user and have the help desk reset the password on the phone with the attacker. This is another good reason why there should be very strong processes and procedures for a password reset to avoid this type of impersonation. Traditional physics tells us that if we are in one location, it's not possible for us to also be in another location at the same time. This is something we can also apply to logins and session usage on our systems. If one person is logged in from one facility and we notice that person is also logged in from a different location, that may indeed be an indicator of compromise. Of course, this may not always be the case, and this may be very difficult to track down as well. Many of us have accounts that are running on different devices simultaneously. You might have an account that's logged in on a desktop, a laptop, and a mobile device, and sometimes those devices can exist in different locations. Or this may be an automated process, perhaps a service login, and the service login is obviously not the same as an interactive login. Here's a report that I ran from my Google Mail account. It lists out all of the different types of access, the location with the IP addresses, and when this particular activity occurred. This can show me if I was the person logged in and using my Google Mail account, or if there may be an account running elsewhere that may have access to my mailbox. Once an attacker has done all of the hard work of gaining access to a system, they want to be sure that they remain in that system as long as possible. And they also know that if you're able to patch this system, you would effectively close the vulnerability and perhaps lock them out of this system that they previously had access to. This is why you'll notice that viruses and malware will tend to disable any type of updates from the antivirus software once it has infected that machine. This means the user would not be able to download any security patches or update any signatures for antivirus, which of course means that the attacker can remain on that system for as long as they need. If you're finding that you're not able to connect to certain security websites or download security patches, that could certainly be an indicator of compromise. Normally, you would think logging in, all you would need is a username, password, and any other type of authentication mechanism to gain access to a system. And indeed, most of the time, that's true. But what if these logins occur in very different parts of the world? We should be able to look at all of the logons and logoffs for a particular account to see exactly where the users might be located. For example, there may be someone logging in from your corporate office in Omaha, Nebraska, right in the middle of the United States. And you notice that a few minutes later, 
you have another login from the same user located in Australia. This should immediately create some type of alert or alarm indicating that these two logins should not be occurring so quickly together at such a very far distance. These types of impossible logins should be something that you can easily identify by looking at the authentication logs. This would tell you when a person logs in and where they're logging in from, and then that can be compared to any of the other logins occurring for that user during a particular time frame. When an attacker gets inside of your network and gains access to your systems, there is always something the attacker is doing that should allow you to track any of their progress. This is called resource consumption. For example, the attacker may be transferring files from one system to another or transferring data out of your network and onto the attacker's servers. This would certainly show a spike in traffic. And if you happen to notice that your network is suddenly busier than it normally might be at 3 in the morning, that could be an indicator of compromise. Your firewall logs would certainly show a transfer of information associated with a flow of traffic. And you might even have IP addresses and time frames associated with that as well. This can often be your first notification that someone may be inside of your network and transferring data from one place to the other. And there have been breaches where the only notification that something was a little unusual was one small file transfer occurring at a time when nothing else should be happening. Sometimes not being able to access a resource on your network is relatively innocuous and not something that is an IT security concern. But there are times when a resource being unavailable could be an indicator of compromise. For example, a server may suddenly be inaccessible across the network because an attacker was trying to find a vulnerability and in that process caused the server to crash. Or it may be that there's network that's being disrupted in one part of the network. This may be caused by the attacker transferring data on the network. Or they may be trying to create a problem on the network so that they can run other exploits elsewhere. This attempt to exploit a vulnerability can certainly cause a server to fail. And there have been more than one case in my career where we found a system that had failed because someone tried to find a known vulnerability in that system. If you access some data on a file system, you may find that the data is suddenly encrypted and not available. And if that's the case, you may be infected with ransomware. And as we've already mentioned, if you try to log into a server and it tells you that your account is locked, that resource will certainly be inaccessible. And it's probably locked because an attacker tried to brute force your password. In the world of IT, we try to log as much information as we can. And very often, those logs may also be an indicator of compromise. For example, it might be an out-of-cycle logging, which means the log or the information contained in the log is something that should not be in that log during that particular time frame. For example, your organization probably has a change control process that manages the updates of security patches. These security patches are probably installed on a very regular schedule. And everyone knows the time and date that these security patches are commonly pushed out. But if you happen to see log information showing that patches or applications are being installed at times when you would not expect them to be there, this may be a case of out-of-cycle logging. We see this quite a bit with firewalls because firewalls tend to record every single traffic flow and all of the details associated with those traffic flows. This means that we can look at every bit of traffic traversing that firewall to understand what was sent at any particular time of the day. And if we're examining the firewall logs and notice that some information is being transferred at an unusual time frame, that may indeed be an out-of-cycle logging and an indicator of compromise. The attackers also know that there are extensive logs being stored on operating systems, workstations, firewalls, and other devices. Because of this, attackers will very often delete log information in order to hide the fact that they were on that system. Each time the attacker authenticates, transfers files, sends data through a firewall, or accesses a server, there will most likely be a log associated with those actions. This is why it's a good best practice not only to create reports based on that log information, but to also set up notifications if any of that log information is missing. This would give you some type of indication that there might be a compromise occurring on your network. And a very clear indicator of compromise is when suddenly your private organizational data is suddenly made available on the internet. It's very possible for an attacker to gain access to all of your systems, exfiltrate all of your sensitive information, 
and you have no idea that any of that data was even transferred. At least not until that data suddenly appears on the internet and everyone can now view this sensitive information that normally would only be private to your company. This is sometimes done in conjunction with ransomware. The attackers will embed ransomware in your environment and encrypt all of that data on your systems. But before doing that, the attackers will send all of that sensitive information to their servers. They'll then inform the victim that they are expecting a payment so that they can send the decryption key. And if you don't send any payment, they'll start releasing your private information to the public. Sometimes this information will suddenly appear on a server that's publicly available on the internet. Researchers will then need to go through the data to see if they can discover where this information was stolen from and contact the original owner.